Good evening, or whatever time of day it is when you happen to be listening to this. This is the British Gaming Podcast for the 28th of July, 2015. As always, this is Sam, and with me is Richie. Hello. And Terry. I feel beautiful. Of course you do. Uh, this week, Richie As wrote always. out our topic list, so I'll let him go through everything we've got in store today. Cool. Cheers for that, Sam. Yeah, we've got a, quite a good list of stuff that I've put together. Well, I say good. It might not be good since I put it together. We're going to start Ooh, off. Go Sam's going Sam's to talk about our group YouTube channel, which we did discuss in the last podcast, but it was about an hour into the podcast when most people will have fallen asleep by then. So we thought we'd cover that again. Uh, the big thing going on at the moment, uh, SGDQ, Summer Games Done Quick. You might have seen something about it if you're into your games. Basically a big speedrunning event, but we'll come back to that. Uh, Sam wants to cover something to do with Ouya. I don't really know anything about that. I haven't read the article. Apparently they're not paying people when they said they would, but I'm sure Sam will cover that. Uh, the Electronic Sports League is to start drug testing competitors, basically like they would a professional athlete in the Olympics or something like that. So we'll be discussing that. Uh, Fallout Shelter finally coming to Android. Uh, quite well, sort of in the middle of this month. No, next month. We're in July, aren't we? Yeah, we the middle July, of next yeah. month. I said the yeah, date like you. five minutes ago. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, good. <laughs> I, w- I wasn't listening. Uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider um, is coming out in, later this year on the Xbox, and then a bit later as a time exclusive on other consoles. So we'll be talking about that and t- console time exclusives in general. Uh, Kojima and oh, I'm going to say this horribly. Gorilla, Gorilla. Oh, I can't even say it. Someone Guillermo say it for del me. Toro. Thank you. Um, <laughs> apparently are in talks again to, for on a new project after obviously Silent Hills and the whole PT scandal and all that sort of stuff. Uh, keyboard and mouse support coming to the Xbox One. But I mean, the whole sort of one console thing of PC and Windows 10 integration. We'll talk about that a little bit. We'll have the usual, what have we been playing? Uh, I thought it might be nice to talk about any upcoming games we've got coming for the holiday season. Because obviously it's coming up quite soon in the next couple of months got our usual fan questions and then hopefully sam's question of the week if he has one prepared i will Wait, holiday release is coming soon are you a retailer richie <laughs> it's july you've got to start thinking about this stuff <laughs> oh dear. Um, true i've also, got to write my christmas list can i check if someone has the fan questions loaded up no but i will do by the time we get there <laughs> okay so we'll start off with the uh group youtube channel so this is something we mentioned 55 odd minutes into the last podcast according to youtube analytics only 33 percent of you are still with us at the time so to make sure everybody gets the message this will be the last podcast to be hosted on my solo channel we have <gasps> a new group british gaming blog channel which will host the british gaming podcast and it will also host the races i will do a similar announcement in our sonic and knuckles race to announce that the races are moving over as well because not everyone who listens to the podcast watches the races and vice versa although you all definitely should watch both what does that mean for our solo channels well I'll still be uploading uh, video game comics, remade, repackaged, rebooted, game design and theory, any top tens I decide to do, because sporadically I sprinkle a few of those around. And uh, yeah, any other videos that I think of doing sort of off the cuff. Uh, Terry, what's going to be over on your channel? Um, At the moment, it's been consistent uh, so far of the races, like you've been uploading yourself, but that's going to be put a stop to. But I am doing my Let's Plays of games that suck because I suck at games. Yeah, you keep losing the races, so you have to do the four things. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and I'm going to be doing my freebie of the month. The next one coming this week. This time it's a mod. What will it be? And just any other projects uh, that I I feel like doing. Yeah, I know you. I know what mod it will be. <laughs> I know because you yep. told me. <laughs> and uh, Richie, what's going to be on yours? Because at the moment, yours is just a billboard for tumbleweed sales. Oh, every week, every week. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've got a video. I, I talked about it in the last one. I said I wasn't going to spoil it. But when I had Chaz around last week, we recorded some Surgeon Simulator. We did a game on that. <laughs> we did it where you sort of each person takes one person controls the hand one person controls the fingers it's yeah. it's very good fun as i said last time unfortunately the video quality didn't come out brilliant but it still is it's watchable i watched it back and it is watchable so i'll be putting that up okay. um me and terry sell it. really been, sell it <laughs> yeah, well you know it will, it's good it's good it's really funny to watch even if you can't necessarily see what's going on i think us and the interaction and everything i think it works really well it makes a really interesting and funny video um <laughs> 
me and Terry have talked a little bit about hopefully in the next sort of week or so doing some GTA heists, Ooh, GTA yeah. 5 yes. heists. That could be very interesting to record, presuming my PC can handle running GTA 5 and recording at the same time. We'll find out. And some Payday <laughs> 2, maybe? And some Payday Ooh, 2 is yes. definitely on the cards. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay, definitely. so um, we'll stop all plugging ourselves, but uh, we'll put links to each of... So there'll be four channels. There's the group channel where the podcasts and the races and anything that we're all involved with will go. Then the solo channels for our solo projects, one each. So that's a total of four channels to keep your eye on. Um, but it'll be on the website, so you can find it all there. It's nice, not one simple, nice place. Yes, everything will go on britishgamingblog.co.uk as well. Uh, there is not a channel link at the moment, because the channel has to have more than 500 subscribers before I can give it a custom URL. Um, I'm in the very slow process of re-uploading all the previous podcasts and races to um the group channel however i am on rural broadband so you know I don't are. Know. you are <laughs> yes uh 0.3 mbps upload speed so that's you know like overnight <laughs> uploads for everything we have taken the opportunity though terry's been very kind in fixing some of the older videos like one of the podcasts uh, this sound only came out of the left channel and not the right um so he's gone back and fixed that so they'll be improved upon um remastered so... <laughs> HD. hd versions yes <laughs> right so and coming um... in 3d for you 3ds owners <laughs> richie you wanted to uh Three lead D's off sound. with summer games done quick yeah we've discussed it before i'm a big fan of speed running i spend many 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 hours watching people on twitch speed run this that and the other so i mean this for me is ideal SGDQ is basically a speedrunning event um, that happens every year. There's also AGDQ, which happens. They sort of happen around sort of six months apart-ish, give or take. Um, AGDQ it's basically being awesome games. Awesome games, games done quick. Yes, correct. Yeah. Um, it's basically a speedrunning event where all sort of the top speedrunners and sort of fans in general all congregate in one place. I'm not sure where they are this year, actually. And they all come together and they speedrun loads of games over like five days and basically all the money that's raised for it goes towards charity which i believe is doctors without borders again this year which i think it, it was is, last time yeah. as well which um, as far so, as i know is a good cause so it's all fantastic stuff Have you i haven't any? caught a lot of this year's one due to work and getting comic pages drawn and various other bits and pieces but i did see the knit nats run of castle of illusion hd that was a lot of fun and you also made me watch game pro zero one one um his <laughs> crash bandicoot 2 run which i believe is now world famous it's, it's been the highlight of sgdq so far i think <laughs> um terry was watching there's already a youtube clip up of it of the highlights which oh, terry was you can find through. it anywhere you can find it everywhere oh yeah um the guy got banned from twitch as well um it was hilarious. He was, he basically kept making references to wanting to kill himself. Now, granted, that was referring to an ex. It was, yeah, it was in context of the game, wasn't it? You have to kind yeah. of point that out, because the highlights don't really do that any justice unless you watch the full run. Yeah, that's true, uh, because a lot of the highlights just zoom in on... They've got, like, a webcam footage of the couch they're sat on, and then they've got a main window for the game. And the highlights yeah. all seem to zoom in on the webcam footage. I don't know why. Mm. It's just because it's funny. I mean, you can see the awkwardness as well, can't you? Like, the game footage doesn't really matter when you're there for the awkwardness. But, yeah, basically, the suicide kind of comments were in relation to sort of quite a common strategy in a lot of games, which is sort of exploiting the death mechanics of the game. So yeah. he kept... There was a lot of areas where he had to kill himself because it was quicker to kill himself and game over than it was to finish the level. And yeah. so that was kind of the context of that. And there were, then I there think was... where he... Where I drew the line... Right at the very end, he's Yeah, that's about... what I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah, do you want to take it? He basically said that this is what's going to make him become a psychopath and murder everybody, which. Oh, didn't no, that's go over not what I was going to well. refer to. Oh, what were you referring to? Uh, not his I'm going to kill you all comment. His. Um, right at the end, as he's going to the final boss, he oh, says right, yeah. there's a game breaking glitch where if you. I think he says if you pause it at a specific time. It breaks the game and it just crashes. Bear in mind, he hadn't been saving at all because stopping at the save station costs time and it's speedrunning, so you do it all in one run. Um, without saving, of course. 
and as he's going up to the final boss, he purposefully does the glitch to crash the game and cheats everyone in that room out of seeing the game finished. Yeah, it was it was a little bit odd, wasn't it? It was an odd decision to make. It was a dick move. Let's be blunt. Yeah. And the way he was just he really casually as well afterwards after he'd done it, he's just like, "You may as well stop the timer now. It's over." Yeah, it was it was really disrespectful to the event, to everybody watching at home. And to everybody who'd gone all that way out to watch him. You look at all those people sat in chairs in that room just looking at each other like, believe this guy? What the, what the bloody hell? You know? I, was, I love Crash they... 2 as a game as well. I think that's what makes me angry about it. The, the, the yeah. fact they used such a good game as his oh. vessel. A lot of it, it might be good down to nerves as well there. I mean, it's a very high pressure environment to be speed running a game. And there's like thousands of people there. Over a hundred thousand people watching on Twitch is just—I yeah. mean, it's no excuse, but it probably didn't help. No, and it's not the cringiest thing we've seen at Summer Games Stung Quick or Awesome Games Stung Quick either. Yeah, or well, speed running in general. There's pretty mm. awful stuff that comes out of these videos, isn't there? Or like much like E3 cringe videos. Oh, well, I God. think I think Chibi alone. Is like a year's worth of cringe material. That's still one of my favourite highlights of any sort of speedrunning event. It's just, that was so funny. Well, it's not just his, um, you know, way he got told by Caveman, I would really appreciate it if you would be quiet. Uh, which I think was a very polite way to go about it. Yeah. <laughs> but um, just Google that phrase and it'll bring up the right video, trust me. But they both, I've seen videos of both their reactions kind of afterwards where they've both been streaming after that event, not long after that event. And Chibi basically went on a thing about how he was, he kind of regretted what he'd done. It was a really dumb, he, he didn't act sensibly, basically. He regretted the way he yeah, acted. He said it was and stupid then, to sit on the couch for a game he didn't know. And then there was the video with, I don't know if you saw Caveman's reaction video where he talks about it. And he, basically just <laughs> yes. goes, he just goes, the guy was a fuck. <laughs> it's basically what he says. <laughs> Really no, I funny. didn't flip him off. No, I didn't suplex him. I kind of wish I had. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> but there's a video that linked from those, and it's Chibi speedrunning Paper Mario. And his mum walks in and starts <laughs> yelling at him like, It's 1am in the morning, turn this shit off! <laughs> <laughs> they have this hilarious, like, it feels like a 14-year-old and their mum fighting. And then yeah. eventually he's like, well, I won't be speedrunning it tomorrow night because I've got work on Sunday. I already paid the internet bill. God, I'm 24. And that's <laughs> the point where I just sort of buried my head in my hands went, oh, God, he's 24. Yeah. And that's, that's like a sense. year, maybe two-year-old video now. So he's like 25, 26 now. That's the same age as us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, yeah, it means he was the same age as us when he did that. Yeah. Christ. Um... <laughs> But interestingly enough, it was actually an awesome game done quick video that made me really keen to do the Sonic races we've been doing because they did a three-way race between Super Metroid, which was one of the closest and most intense things I've ever watched. Yeah, they do some really good races at events like this. It's really good. I like it when they do sort of Grand Theft Auto races and stuff like that because they're so unpredictable. Oh, much yeah. Much like kind of the Sonic races. Much like the Sonic races with us because... Plug, I'm plug, so plug. terrible at them. <laughs> um, well, it kind of uh, makes it like uh, a bit unpredictable. But see, the Grand Theft Auto races are so sort of randomly generated and random based that it's just impossible to predict. See, please don't say that you're too terrible because you've only had to do one forfeit. I've had to do two. Yeah, but I've only been in two races. <laughs> well, I might have to do a second forfeit <laughs> simply for the fact that you asked me not to do any practice runs of Sonic and Knuckles, and I've kept to that. I haven't. Sonic and I've Knuckles. Had is one of the games I'm least familiar with and also possibly my least favourite of the Mega Drive Sonics. So I could easily have to do a second one. Like Richie said, he's only done two races, so to have done one forfeit, that means he's forfeited 50%. Yeah, statistically, <laughs> statistically, that's awful. Yeah, 50% is horrendous. How long is Sonic and Knuckles? I can't even remember. It's been ages since I've I reckon it. it'll be another 40 minutes to an hour. That Death Egg level is going to kill us. Oh, oh God, excellent. yeah. Yeah, Sandopolis, Sandopolis Zone Act 2 alone is going to drive me insane. Oh, yeah. yeah, another thing to keep in mind with Sonic and Knuckles as well is the difficulty is a little bit higher than Sonic 3, just purely due to the fact that they're both designed to be one continuous game. Yeah, true. 
Uh, so the difficulty just ramps up, really. But yeah. like Richard said, I think speedrunning is quite a pressurized environment. People are always looking for ways to shave a couple of seconds off. Some mm. people have even been caught out cheating. Uh, Chibi, again, cheated Paper Mario, again. <laughs> um, I <didn't> know that. <laughs> Which links nicely into your point about the Electronic Sports League wanting to uh, drug test professional gaming athletes. Yeah, so an article was released this week uh, basically saying that the Electronic Sports League, which is one of the largest sort of gaming leagues, if you like, are going to start te drug testing their competitors. Um, I'm not sure what drugs for. I have to admit, I must have missed that bit in the article, but I know they've had a lot of problems with people taking like sort of basically things like that will help you perform better performance oh, enhancing performance, drugs performance enhancing drugs is the exact phrase yeah yeah ah, so things like ritalin and things like that to help you focus and Basi that yeah stuff thing. that helps you stay awake co makes you concentrate more increases your reflexes all that sort of stuff is apparently now go not going to be allowed and will be tested for what uh what about caffeine i mean caffeine's not exactly <laughs> <laughs> ca caffeine technically <laughs> is a performance enhancing drug it, technically Yes, they won't allow them all to stay up for three days straight on World of Warcraft and eventually die from the sugar crash. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> coffee's banned from the building. <laughs> I mean, seriously, those guys must live on, like, Red Bull or Monster or whatever. Oh, they certainly get enough sponsorships from them. <laughs> yeah, I know, that's what I mean. <laughs> like, all of the deaths associated with it in gaming, and like, we're still going to plaster our name all over this. <laughs> yeah pretty much money to be made um but no, you would you know to be fair any other athlete you would drug test i don't think that should be any different for esports it's still a sport people are getting visas now on the basis that they're athletes yeah. because of esports yeah well, I mean... it's interesting to see that being recognized in such a sort of a high regard in that it basically is like a real sport that's well, how look it at is the prize pots they rules. take home yeah, absolutely. Street Fighter 4 tournament with a £1 million jackpot? Yes, please. I, <laughs> I suck at Street Fighter 4, but yes, please. It You'd just give it a damn good go, wouldn't you? <laughs> For oh, that yeah. kind of money. All the times our dads busted into our rooms like, stop playing those games, you'll never make any money out of it. I wish that like <laughs> these gaming tournaments and PewDiePie and things like that existed back then to just be like, here are people making millions out of just playing video games, so you shut your damn dirty mouth. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a little bit too far. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, these games, they're based on reflexes and strategy, like a sport. So it does make sense. And planning and coordination and cooperation and communication. Uh, all, the, all the co's. Yeah, not to mention a lot of jargon. I mean, I still don't know what the hell a carry is in MOBAs like League of Legends. I've not got a clue. I only I've just found to out what top lane is. I try <laughs> to watch these tournaments on Twitch. Like, League of Legends is always, like, the number one most watched game on Twitch at pretty much all times. And I've tried to mm. watch it, and I've tried to understand it, and it just seems like it's something you really have to dedicate a lot of time to, to understand <laughs> uh, anything. I've been... I've been in friends' hotel rooms at conventions, um, so things like Kitacon, Amacon, Iacon, etc. And, you know, they've had the laptops out and they've hooked it up to the TV in the room and they're all watching, like, this MOBA and they're going, like, cheering and all the rest of it. And I'm just sat there like, I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> yeah. One time I was at this uh, big LAN event at my old university. On one side of the room, you had League of Legends players. The other side, Dodge 2 players. And then in the middle, it's just like all the console players. Just like, yeah, look how much fun we're having. <laughs> 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 but this, each side of the room, it's just like, ooh, those dirty League of Legends players. Ooh, those dirty Dota players. <laughs> you know what? It actually feels like watching football to me. That's how little I understand it. Um... <laughs> Like, I would just refer to that clip from the IT crowd where they sat in the stands and Moss is like, that man has the ball now. I wonder if he'll kick it to the other guy. Oh, he has. Maybe he'll kick the ball too. He did. And apparently that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> Something we can all relate to. <laughs> you know, this is the second podcast in a row where we've actually spoken about sports. Isn't that weird? A little bit. Um, I'll <laughs> tell Trying you what, like I'll men. segue on that point then. Yeah, um, yeah, We have a company that are not being a good sport. 
Hey. Hey. Uh, I'm getting famous for these bad segues. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to end up being like my thing, isn't it? Um, <laughs> One day when we've got lots of fans, there'll be a compilation YouTube video of that. <laughs> Just bad segues. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, Hill we music won't... on the back of it. <laughs> meanwhile uh, there'll be one of just you repeatedly saying this game is hard as dicks over and over <laughs> i still want to put that on a t-shirt <laughs> i would wear that t-shirt <laughs> but no um so ouya uh back when they were still trying to you know make themselves a presence oh they they, try- they offered in- indie developers they said if you get fifty thousand dollars on kickstarter or more we will match your funding, so essentially taking you up to a hundred grand, if you promise to make your game a six-month timed exclusive for the Ouya. Um, and great, people thought, we'll sign up to that. That's just doubled our budget, considering, you know, indie games are operated on quite a tight budget as it is. People might say, oh, a hundred thousand dollars. Um, bear in mind, you know, each of those people you'd probably be taking the piss to pay them 24000 a year for, you know, your programmer, your artist, so on and so forth. So really, $100,000 buys you four staff members for a year, and that's it. No software licenses, no hardware, no office space. You know, and if they're doing this full-time, you've got rent and food to consider. So, yeah, $100,000 really isn't a lot of money. I'm sorry, it's not. Um, especially in those terms. At any rate, a bunch of people signed up to this, and Ouya, as we all know, sort of went down the toilet. <laughs> They've now been bought by Razer, uh, who make a bunch of gaming peripherals, and Razer have been going around telling the indie devs, yeah, you know that money that Ouya said they'd put aside? Kinda never existed, so we don't have it to pay you. Also, you made that deal with a company that has been folded into us and therefore no longer exists. Therefore, that contract technically no longer exists. Swivel. Um, How many many developing companies slash people were affected by this demo? Did that say anywhere in the article? I have no idea. However, what I can tell you is my friend William MacDonald, who developed Kobold's Quest and Dungeons, both of which I reviewed and clearly stated that I was friends with the developer when reviewing them, um, and I state it again here, he is a personal friend. He did his game through Kickstarter, um, mm-hmm. and Ouya sort of dicked him out of the money. They claimed that he wasn't eligible because of the way his Kickstarter had been conducted. I'm not going to go into the details. Suffice to say, I side with William because he's a friend. At the time, he was quite angry about it, but now, with this news coming out, he is laughing his ass off. <laughs> Besides which, not only is it sweet retribution for him, yeah, but he also has to effect. factor in the install base of the Ouya and the easy piracy of the Ouya. If he mm. had done a six-month timed exclusive on the Ouya, he wouldn't have made the sales to keep himself afloat. Mm, exactly. No, that thing tanks so bad. I mean, on top of that, that thing was just horrible to use. The controller, it felt so uncomfortable, and it if anyone uh, who, who has, has a PS3 is just sick of constant update after update after update, that's got nothing on the Ouya, believe me. I used to own <laughs> one of those things. It was a joke. Like, every time I booted it up, and at one point I booted it up, like, pretty much every two, three days, there was an update that took absolutely hours to do. So many times yeah. I was like, well, I ain't playing that tonight i guess i'll play another platform yeah and that kills it opinion here what do you think is a bigger failure for gaming the ouya or atari et because that's the kind of level of failure we're talking about here well ouyas aren't being buried in the desert yet (laughs) (laughs) i think et's got that up on it (laughs) richie never change (laughs) <laughs> so if i tried obviously ouya the deal was six month timed exclusive that deal doesn't exist anymore um but there is a timed exclusive deal that does still exist and is double the length for full 12 months mm-hmm. richie come on i've given you a great segue that time come on oh, but can i just mention one more thing about the ouya before that we segue yes 
Yeah, they've been dicking people around since the start. Uh, my friend Peter, our friend Peter, um, he uh, backed Uya on Kickstarter and uh, his backer model turned up after the model I ordered on Amazon uh, just as a standard retail. Wow, so backers ended up with their Uyas later than the, uh, than the people who just went and bought them from retail. That's disgusting. Yeah, it it's really is. It couldn't get any better. Yeah, but that was a really good segue, Sam. I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm going to let you continue. <laughs> That's going on the compilation. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, Terry, if I find out that you bloody later on tonight make a new YouTube account just to upload a compilation video of segues, I'm going <laughs> to kill an anonymous you. Account. <laughs> now, if that video ever surfaces, people are going to be suspicious. <laughs> so what I've effectively done is I've prevented that video from ever happening. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> right, right. Don't underestimate the, the power Richie. of the internet. Go. <laughs> anyway, time to use flexibility. Let's go. <laughs> yes, thank you for that fantastic segue. Um, <laughs> Rise of the Tomb Raider, which I know Sam's really excited about, is due to be released this November on the Xbox One, and I believe the Xbox 360. Um, no. No? I thought I read it was. Maybe I'm wrong. I guess I am wrong. Uh, it's coming out in early 2016, for the PC, but not until holiday 2016 on the PS4, as as you mentioned, it's a console time exclusive. Do we feel those are fair? Are they right? Why why is this a thing? Has yeah. it always been a thing? Uh, basically, the Xbox One doesn't have a an angle at this point. It, it it doesn't. I'm sorry. It's not got a whole lot to tempt people away from the PS4, so they turned around and went right. We need a couple of franchises. They couldn't get a full exclusive for Tomb Raider. Uh, the developers would have to be mad. Tomb Raider Definitive Edition has outsold the Xbox One version on PS4 um, by a majority. So they would be absolutely stupid to actually phase them out entirely. So they went for the next best thing. They went for the timed exclusive. No doubt some money traded hands. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to be fair, Microsoft have been doing this for quite a while, this whole times use exclusivity thing. I'm really having trouble saying that word. Um, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, back in the original Xbox, there was Fable, that took a while to come to PC. Xbox 360, there was Mass Effect and Gears and War, same again. Bioshock, it had that console exclusivity thing where it came out for PC at the same time, but was delayed for PS3. It's something they've been doing for quite a while, and it's really not a practice I'm fond of. It just, it, it's just alien. And it's the market. Here's why it annoys me for Tomb Raider specifically. If I think about Tomb Raider, okay, I played it first on the Sega Saturn, but I rebought it on PlayStation when I got a PlayStation. Tomb Raider 2, PlayStation. Tomb Raider 3, PlayStation. Tomb Raider, what did they call it? Chronicles? No, that's the, the last one. revelation. Last revelation, thank you. Last revelation, PlayStation. Chronicles, PlayStation. Angel of Darkness, although it was horrible. PlayStation. Yeah, we get the idea. <laughs> right. And now suddenly it's like, oh, Xbox. It's got this legacy and this history with Sony that seems to have just been cast aside for a little bit of sugar money. Well, I mean, console exclusive and things like that really show how much more of a business video games are these days, doesn't it? Like, you didn't mm. really get it so much. Like, I'm sure it probably existed, but you didn't get it so much 10, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, in fact. I don't but know. I'd days... have said 20 years ago, the system you bought defined which games you could play. Yeah. Maybe so, Even if but the game released sort of like timed exclusives, where they? You didn't, like, have to wait six months before you could buy it on your console. No, you just had to buy the other console. <laughs> pretty much like, i can't true, think yeah, of true. many mega drive and super nintendo games that were truly cross-platform even games that came out on multiple platforms we're talking adventures of batman and robin we're talking um aladdin you know that kind of thing even when they came out on multiple consoles they were actually entirely different games from entirely different developers even true. mortal kombat had differences on nintendo there was no blood yeah to a lesser extent yes but like, I look at my collection. Wiz and Liz. Can't get it on Super Nintendo. Toy Story. Can't get it on Super Nintendo. <laughs> I, like I like how the sound has changed, because we can Super tell you're Nintendo. looking at this collection. <laughs> okay. Super Fantasy Zone. Strider. Streets of Rage. Streets of Rage 2. 
Um, yeah. The Mega Drive Sparks and the Super Nintendo Sparks are entirely different games. I mean, every single Sonic, all the Shinobis. Yeah. Uh, Daffy Duck goes to fucking Hollywood. <laughs> I mean, where nowadays differs a lot to back then. Is, There's a very uh, big back theme, then... Sam. There's a theme mm. in the games, you know. There, most of those were sort of movie TV tie-ins, weren't they? Which is quite an interesting. Altered Beast, Asterix. <laughs> Do you want me to keep going? Sylvester and Tweety, KG Capers, Taz and Escape from Mars. Um, what else? That's I, a, I think that's a very interesting point, though. Is I think it's crazy. Mm. Just to show you how much it dominates the market. Shot, Castle of Illusion, World of Illusion, Space well, Harrier 2. The thing is, back then, I mean, with the consoles, there was Shouting so video many... video game titles. <laughs> there was so many exclusives, just mainly due to the fact that, A, first-party support was a lot more... Uh, you know, there was a lot more of it than there is nowadays. And, two, there, there was so much difference in terms of the technology of the consoles, the architecture, all the technical blah-blah jargon-jargon. Dynamite <laughs> Heady Rice Star Comic Zone. God damn it, Sam. Yeah, and I, it, a lot of it comes back to the whole business thing as yeah. well, again, like I was saying, because, yeah. I mean, it's so much more of a business. There's so much more money in video games now than there was 20 years ago. That's that the it's, thing. It's I a no-brainer not to try and get it on as many consoles. You get more cross-platform now than you have ever had before. I That's... genuinely struggle to think of more than 20 PlayStation 3 exclusives and more than 20 xbox 360 exclusives mm. pretty much everything was cross-platform that i played on those consoles what i will not do if you want to turn around and say oh i can name 20 saying halo 1 halo 2 halo 3 doesn't count you'd have to condense that into halo okay <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> franchises you get one they, yeah. they count and halo one. 1 and 2 aren't exclusive anyway they're on pc so are we really because the games developers and the games companies don't seem to include pc when they're talking about exclusivity, it's exclusive to PlayStation 4, also PC. Yeah, yeah I know that is that, so though. stupid. If if I don't own a PS4 <laughs> and I can play the game, it's not a PS4 exclusive. I don't give a shit. Exactly. Although even further, <laughs> I'm looking at my PlayStation 1 collection, which is directly below my Mega Drive. Collection. Oh, please don't go listing more games, Sam. <laughs> oh, I could. I really, it would be faster to list the games that weren't exclusive. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, the thing is, nowadays, though, with the hardware, it's all pretty much the same. It's all x64 architecture, all pretty much PC stuff using AMD CPUs, and, you know, it just all runs in pretty much the same way. Uh, it's just that yeah. one. I don't think we got cross platform to the degree we, we have it now until we sort of entered the PlayStation 2 Xbox era definitely and even then that was when it was starting to kind of get the overlap going with ps2 and xbox there was a lot that was uh, kind of going multi-platform there that's mm -hmm. sort of where it began i think can I also go to your point of you know the last generation so things like bioshock timed exclusive to microsoft ps3 eventually got it mass effect the same deal um eternal sonata star ocean the last hope when they did come to playstation 3 whether it was six months later or not to entice people and to sort of make up for it, they added content nine times out of ten. Mm. Like, there was new stuff that was only on the PlayStation version to well, make up for that delay. <laughs> the thing is, with Bioshock, they pretended with that. Uh, they said, oh yeah, PlayStation exclusive content. If you go on the uh, Xbox Live store for uh, Bioshock, there's a free download pack that gives you all the stuff you get on the PS3 version beautiful um <laughs> yeah. well, like eternal sonata i believe that had an additional playable character and an entire extra dungeon rise of the tomb raider if it's a full year two things will happen one will probably have half of the dlc included on the disc because there will be dlc for this game um and two bear in mind the xbox one version will have probably gone down to about £25 after a full year. There's mm. no way they'll launch the PS4 version at 49.99. It just won't happen. So we'll get it cheaper, we'll get it with additional content. Fuck them. Yeah, well, I'm going to get on PC anyway and probably pay like a fiver for it, so... <laughs> <laughs> Master race. Yeah, dude, to be fair, you've got a PC as well. You can do the same thing. I can, but... I that's not I bought a powerful PC for video editing and making video games. I can only give so much hard drive space to video games. Sounds like you need another hard drive. Yeah, I really do. Uh, like <laughs> already I filled a terabyte and I've only had this thing what 2 3 months. 
It's insane. Um, anyway, so there's another timed exclusive which is coming out. Uh, this time not on consoles, but on mobile devices. So Fallout Shelter is already on iOS or iPhones, iPads, etc. Uh, it's coming to Android on, I think you said the 13th of August. Is that I right? Indeed. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, 13th of August. It comes out the day before my deadline to get this new comic to the printers in time for a convention <laughs> at the end of the month. Plug, it can't plug, come like out the day days. before my deadline. Plug. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it can come out the day after my deadline. That's fine. Not the day before. But I mean, so, do we do we care anymore? No. Did we care at the start? I suppose. No. I kind of did. <laughs> I I was kind of excited. I like the whole idea of it. I like the concept of it. I will probably download it on the day it comes out, and I I've... will probably play it for a week, and then I will probably never play it again. I have no idea what this app is. Can you tell me a bit about it? Come on, Richie, be an advertising board. It's basically just a shitty mobile game. It's like a free to play. <laughs> it's, well, let's face it, that's what it is. There's not really much to it. You just kind of. It's basically like kind of like a simulator, isn't it? It's meant to be like a vault simulator. You have people and they have needs and things and you meet their needs. So and it's the Sims. People and... Kind of. All yeah. out meets it's the scaled Sims. down, yeah. <laughs> But it's supposed to be one of these things that's that's surprisingly addictive. So I'm not going to rule it out. I'm going to try it. Uh, well, uh, you're going to do it on the basis of fuck it, it's free. Exactly, yeah. yeah. It's not something I'd spend any money on. But no. Can I talk about another new release which has dropped very surprisingly out of nowhere, which isn't free, but I also doubt any of the three of us will give a fuck about. Go for it. <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy's 4 is out. Which I, apparently I was going to come the out. Rest. First it was going to be Halloween, then it was going to be August, and then suddenly, oh hey, it's out. Yeah, I saw that on Steam. I saw that pop up on my Steam. I've, I've only ever seen videos of the, the Five Nights games. I've never played any. I have played some. And this is what I'll say. This is I will say this respectfully. The gameplay of the Five Nights at Freddy's games, at least the ones I've played, which are one and two, don't do a damn thing for me. Not interested in the gameplay at all. But the war behind it and the story, now that does intrigue me, especially how it's drip-fed and piecemealed and sort of put forward a bit at a time. Like, I'm not excited that Five Nights at Freddy's 4 is out. I'm excited that MatPat will do a new Game Theory episode on it. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of those videos as soon as you mentioned that game. Yeah. Because that that's the bit that gets me. Like, don't give a shit about the game, just want to know what the updates to the story are. Which the only get of... things I get out of it are watching the videos of the guys at Achievement Hunter play it and shit themselves. That's all <laughs> I really that's all I've ever really seen of the games. Yep. Yeah, but I think that's maybe all you need. Um I mean the guy's a workhorse. That's four games in under a year. Oh yeah, you can't fault that. Yeah, say what you will for the quality of them. You know, it's <laughs> It's impressive. And, you know, if I put out a game that made that much money and I could make a sequel within two months that would make me yes, even more money, <laughs> I'd do it. Of course you know. we Hashtag selling out. We'd all do it. We'd all do it. If the, if the figures were right, we'd all do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so how are you coming along with Rogue Wings? Shut up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I am... Um, I've actually... I didn't get along very well learning C. I, I, I just didn't. C sharp is not for me. Um, I have got a visual coding thing, which is probably very similar to what Richie's using in his uh, uni course, because he said his first year was entirely visual scripting. Because um, I understand if statements, conditional branches, variables, etc. I just... If I look at a block of code... It, it just all starts merging together. I can't read it. Um, but I can... I understand the logic. And this block interface plugin that I've downloaded allows me to do the Cody stuff without having to type it out. And I can arrange it and display it in a way that makes sense to me. Um, so that's really, really helping. What isn't helping is that I redo the 3D model of the goddamn plane about three times a week. Because I can't decide how I want it to look. And at the moment, it's very Arkham Knight influenced. I've got pretty much <laughs> the exact same 
you know the front of the Batmobile, like that little cockpit he sits in? Oh, which, yeah. And it sort of slides really nicely forward when he gets out. Yeah, I've pretty much copied that, and I'm like, can't just copy that. Influence, fine. Outright copy, no. Um, so yeah, I keep spending more of my time on that than I do actually putting the game together. <laughs> plug, plug, plug. <laughs> um, what was the next topic uh, that you wanted to discuss um, as, after that silence? Uh, well, we <laughs> probably should have segued to it after Tomb Raider and saying, well, Rise of the Tomb Raider saved the <laughs> yeah. Xbox well, One. No, I mean, in terms of silence, there's another game you wanted to discuss. Hey, these are good. I like these tonight. <laughs> oh, you're, on, you're you in competition get. with Sam. <laughs> you get. <laughs> Guillermo del Toro and Kojima uh, are reportedly working together on a new collaboration after Silent Hills fell through. And Terry is an it arsehole. might be a bit strong. <laughs> it's all kind of a bit rumoured, a bit... Gaming sites have gone all hype for it, of course they have. There's nothing really set in stone. It's just kind of been said they... After everything that happened with Silent Hills and PT and whatever, and it got sort of cancelled really out of the blue and... Just From what I understand, it. Guillermo del Toro confirmed it in an interview that they were working on something. Mm. I wonder if it's well, going to be one of those kind of spiritual successors like Ukulele and Symphony of the Night and stuff like I, that. I told you Kojima would be going to Kickstarter. Mm. They, his yeah. exact words he, in an interview about working with him, about working with del Toro, he said um, they're planning on doing something together. So... Whether or not anything will come to fruition out of that, it's a, I think it's a bit early to say, but it would be very interesting to see if they do. Mm. Oh, I really hope so. And the two of them together, they, they, I mean, Silent Hills looked like it was on course to be just something amazing, didn't it? And it just... I know a... people who bought PS4s just to play PT. By the oh. way, Richie, you missed that boat. You're out of luck. Yeah, I'll have to stick to YouTube videos for that. Yeah. Uh, I, I actually still haven't finished it. It's it's that good that I can't play it. It's too scary for you. It is. It really is. It <laughs> yeah. freaks me out. Oh, no, I sat and watched someone play it. We uh, made sure the lights were off and he was playing it. I was just like watching. I was like, oh, God, oh, God. I don't get freaked out of games often. Well, apart from that time with Alien Isolation where someone knocked on my window, but... <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, that sounds the like was a story. Yeah, the, yeah. I hear the alien crawling around events like clank, clank, clank. Everything else is quiet. It's two a.m. I'm in the dark, and then someone walks past my window and knocks on it. It was did, did horrible. You, did you shit yourself a little? Yeah, a little bit. It was touching cloth. <laughs> okay, so never mind Terry's turtle heads. Um, Metaphorically yeah. speaking. Okay. Keyboard and mouse support, Xbox One. Will it save the console? Will it interest anyone in buying one? I'm Sam, I'm go... disappointed. You didn't even try to segue that one. No, I didn't. I just didn't <laughs> want to talk about your poop. <laughs> um, I wanted more. Well, I the... wanted more on the poop. Well, this whole idea of the keyboard and mouse British support thing is a load podcast. of shit, so, you know. <laughs> Christ. Anyway. <laughs> So, Microsoft have announced in the last, I think it's the last couple of days or last week or so, that keyboard and mouse support is planned and coming at some point for the Xbox One. Mm. This is all part of, obviously, the integration with Windows this 10. This is going to break I'm... every FPS. I think Windows 10 comes out tomorrow, doesn't it? It releases tomorrow, if I remember correctly. Yes. So, all the integration with that. The thing have is... you reserved your copy? I reserved mine. I'm not going to install it, but I reserved it. Yeah, same. So... I've reserved it. Um, I'm going to put it on my laptop first, and the reason being is uh, I've got a Wacom Cintiq 15X, which is what I use for all of my artwork. Now, that tablet on Windows 8.1, I already lucked out in that the Windows 7 drivers just so happen to work on Windows 8.1. Mm. There are no official drivers for it, and Wacom consider it to be legacy hardware. So I'm going to install Windows 10 onto my laptop, not my desktop PC. I'm going to install the Windows 7 drivers for my Wacom Cintiq onto the laptop, plug the Cintiq into the laptop and see if it works okay. If it works okay, then I'll consider upgrading my desktop to Windows 10. Make sure you try compatibility mode and run as administrator. Dude, I, I wasn't born yesterday. <laughs> um... But, 
Yeah, in terms of it breaking FPSs as well, I mean, another thing, as much, I'm always the first to advocate the pros of keyboard and mouse support. It's so much better aim with a mouse. I'm I'm saying that objectively. I don't even think it's a matter of opinion. An analog stick will not aim as well as a mouse. But the problem is, with You've a keyboard... You've got more control over your speed. You can do, like, slow crawls and quick snaps, which you just, an mm. analog stick is a constant speed. So objectively, mm. yes, a mouse is better. Yeah, the thing is, though... An analog stick is better than WASD for movement. Maybe. I mean, you've got incremental movements, whereas with WASD, you need modifier key, so your shift key, to change between walking and running. And there's, like, no sort of, like, you know, kind of transition, if you get what I mean. Here's the problem I see. Mm. If you can stream Xbox games to other Windows 10 devices, Mm. um, what's the point in having a gaming PC, and an Xbox One. Surely you'd just have one or the other. The other issue it brings up for me is, you know, I can sit on the couch with controller in hand. If I've got a keyboard and mouse, there has to be something for that keyboard and mouse to rest on. True. So, yeah, ruins, ruins that straight away. Yeah. Although, going back to that streaming thing, I mean, I thought the way the streaming thing was working was just over home network, like how you can stream PS4 games to a PS Vita, or how you can stream, stream, uh, stream Steam games to like a Steam box, or that kind of thing. I, I thought it was uh, kind of that sort of deal with Windows 10 and Xbox One. Yeah, but if you wanted to play Xbox One games on a PC, mm-hmm. surely you'd just get a good enough PC to run games. By the time you've looked at the combined costs for a PC and an Xbox One, you might as well have just got on a really good PC. Yeah, but I mean, if it's streaming, it's not going to be that demanding, so you could do it on a Microsoft Surface tablet, for instance. Hmm, true. But, like, when I'm when I'm thinking about this whole keyboard and mouse support thing, you know, I see my consoles as being a lot more social, a lot more relaxed. My consoles are in my living room, for the most part. The PlayStation 3, the PlayStation 4 are. Anything older than that is up in the attic room with me and an old CRTV. (laughs) Um, So, we've got... Well, where was I going with this? Yes, they're a lot more social in the living room. Like, I will sit and play a game with the other half or the kids watching me, you know? Mm, Yeah. Uh, When I go on my PC to game... It's an entirely different kind of gaming. I'm looking for something different when I game on the PC. Usually that's a lot more... It's a more solitary experience, um, and I play very different kinds of games on my PC. I don't want PC controls in my console games. I have them for entirely different things, and what I get out of one is not necessarily what I get out of the other, and I don't want to mix those. It's like getting ma- baked beans on my mashed potatoes. Just no. Not good. No you one's going to or... force you to mix them, are they? No one's forcing you to do I mean, having the ability to do both isn't, ne- isn't always a bad thing. I mean, having more choice is never a bad thing. But it does mean that I'm going to be up against people. Like, if I got Halo, for example, because it's one of the few Xbox exclusives that I like, even if I probably shouldn't, um, if I got Halo and I'm playing with the the controller... I would feel like I would be at a disadvantage compared to everybody using the keyboard and mouse for what we said about aiming and being able to quickly turn and all the rest of it. Um, Therefore, to make it a fair level playing field, I would feel obligated to use the keyboard and mouse, which then changes the nature of how I'm playing and ugh. Another thing I'm wondering as well is with the support is how many keyboard and mice are actually going to be supported? Is it going to be one of those things where only certain licensed by Microsoft things are going to be supported, or is it going to be just completely open? Is what I'm wondering. It's well, like that's okay. St- my my wireless keyboard and mouse are Microsoft anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but then again, they were made before the Xbox One, and Microsoft aren't so great at supporting their legacy stuff. Seriously, the hassle I had installing my 360 controller onto Windows was a nightmare. Really? Yeah. I literally, Windows 8.1 took my Xbox 360 controllers. So I've got a wired one and a wireless one. Plug and play. No really? hassle. Yeah, yeah I've I... had no trouble whatsoever either on Windows 7 and Windows 8. Yeah, drivers just auto installed. Ah, oh, see, I had to go through Device Manager and faff about. But anyway, uh, <laughs> we're kind of going on for a bit of a tangent there, aren't we? <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. But um, oh, where was I going before we got onto the device drivers? No idea. 
I think it's going to be interesting either way. I think it's going to be interesting to see what they can do with it, whether I'll open any doors on the Xbox One itself. And I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Sony do something similar in the future. Mm. Oh, that was it. Uh, the brands that support. Microsoft are pretty closed off with uh, peripherals that they support. Steering wheels, for instance. A friend of mine has got one of the high-end Logitech steering wheels. Works on PS3, PS4, PC, even PS2. Xbox 360, nope. Would this be Ellie by any chance? No, Peter. Ah, oh, okay. I know Ellie just, well, I say just, it was like a month ago, but she just got a steering wheel. So. Oh, no, I think hers is a Thrustmaster. Ah, uh, okay, fair enough. Giggity. Yeah, no, I remember her. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is, right. I don't know what a Thrustmaster is, but it sounds like I need one. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the ladies call me. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. That was my nickname in high school. <laughs> Let's, because we're... Time-wise, we're on. It looks li- like we're coming <laughs> coming up towards the back end of what we'd usually do. Don't you dare say Frostmaster and back end together, Terry. <laughs> um, okay, so what have we been playing? I thought it was upcoming holiday season games we're looking forward to first. Well, we oh. can do both. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Yeah, go for it. Okay, um, yeah, what have we been playing? Okay. Who Fine. wants to take this first? I will. Um, mainly because I can get a cheap plug out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I've not been playing a whole lot because of drawing the comic pages ready for Melksham Comic Con on the 29th and 30th of August in Melksham. Cheap um, bastard. Joe Cape number three will be launching there, provided I get t- to the printers on time. Um, but no, I've been going through a lot of my Mega Drive catalogue. Well, I say a lot. I've played a bit of all 50-odd games that I currently own in physical form. Mm-hmm. Um, because I'm putting together a top 10 video of my favourite Mega Drive games. Not oh, the best. That's good. It, they won't be objectively the best Mega Drive games. They will be my favourite, which means rose-tinted glasses, liking them for things that aren't objectively necessarily good. I hope Shaq Fu is in that list. It is not. I don't own Shaq Fu. <laughs> I've, to limit it, um, because like every list is like Gunstar Heroes. So I've said only games that i have physical boxed copies of um so that limits it to 50 games so one in five games in my collection has made it into that list so and it's only games you have original cartridge copies of so nothing on compilation discs and no so the sega mega drive ultimate collection is out i might record the footage from that just because it'll be pixel clear footage in 720p um but then everything else might look as clear and it'd look inconsistent how so? Are you trying to say something about my camcorder, boy? <laughs> my camcorder records in 1080p. No, I'm saying in regards to the other games that you can't record from the Ultimate Collection. Oh, right. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. I should probably just record them all from Fusion then. But yeah, I've been playing through um, pretty much my entire collection, having a lot of memories, and just trying to pick out my ten favourites. Hmm. Very yeah. cool. I haven't been playing much different to what I had last time we did this last week. Uh, some more Binding of Isaac. I've been getting into that again. Well, I say getting into it again. I never really stopped being into it. Please say Arkham. I've been playing some more Arkham, yes. yes. Have you seen Scarecrow yet? I don't think I have. <sighs> you, you'll know when you do. You'll know. It's not I'm, an if, a but, or a maybe. Have... You'll, you'll know. <laughs> oh, well, I haven't then. But I have been playing it, and I have really been enjoying it. Good. It turns out, though, uh, the guys with guns are really annoying. I hate them when they have guns. <laughs> I'm just, sad to get the idea you might be playing me. this game all wrong. <laughs> I think I may well be, yeah. Stealth obviously isn't my strong point in this, but I'm giving it my best. <laughs> Richie, can I request a Let's Play? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be family friendly. And plus, it'll, it'd just be like watching me do a Sonic race. It would just be death after death after death. <laughs> I have died lots of times already. It's quite a straightforward game. Yeah, well, I'm not a very straightforward person. (laughs) All right, fair enough. (laughs) Apart from that, that's about it, really, to be honest. I haven't played a whole lot. All right, Terry? (laughs) Okay, um, I've been been playing an unnamed mod, which you'll be seeing footage of uh, this coming week. Yeah, I've seen your Steam activity. I definitely know which mod it is now. (laughs) Don't tell anyone. Um, and on top of that, I finished the main story on Arkham Knight. Enjoyed the hell out of it. That was really... Oh, I yep. wish I'd known you um, had finished the plot to Arkham Knight. I 
someone called me out on my spoiler-free review saying, hey, you said you were going to do a plot analysis video and you never did. So I just recorded it, literally before the podcast, 15 minutes of me talking about the plot. It would have been great to have had someone to have bounced stuff off. I'm not. I'm not doing it again. I'm not talking about it again. Yeah. Um, but I, I do wish I'd have known that. We need to have a <laughs> chat privately about the plot of that game, then. Yep, certainly. Yes. On top of that as well, a uh, little bit more of Hyrule Warriors. Um, but uh, start. I got Pikmin three recently. Uh, took that round of friends, and we were playing that. We played the first day. I think it's called the first level, and uh, <laughs> we left a Pikmin behind accidentally. We lost it. We just couldn't find it. And then, as the spaceship flew away, it ran to the area where the spaceship was, and then got ganged up on. And it was the saddest moment ever. I'd never felt so high <laughs> guilty yeah, in a I've game played- ever. I've played Pikmin 3. My little sister's got it on her Wii U. And it is the most horrific thing when you leave Pikmin behind. <laughs> oh, I like, know. There's, there's like a few standard animations that play each time. <laughs> and they're all awful. I know. My heart actually it's hurts a little brutal. bit when I think back on it. Absolutely <laughs> brutal slaughter of Pikmin. Have you seen the secret ending to Pikmin 1? No, I haven't seen any ending. So spoiler alert. <laughs> Okay, well, it's Pikmin 1, not 3, Terry. Yeah, um, I've got that, and I'm planning to play that too. <laughs> oh, God. Put God your fingers in your ears for a minute then, Terry. Yeah, just, like, mute the chat for a second. Um, and then don't listen to the video when it goes up. <laughs> That's the point. How are we going to tell him when we're done? <laughs> yeah, let's just leave that one out. You guys can discuss it later. <laughs> uh, if for anyone curious, YouTube it. Uh, Pikmin 1 bad ending. I may well do that now. Yep. Oh, I'll write this second, Richie. <laughs> yeah, doing it. And I finally bought a legit copy of... Well, not legit. <laughs> I say legit as if I had a pirated version. It's impossible at the moment. I finally bought a copy of The Last of Us. Oh, okay. Yeah, because before I'd only ever played a borrowed version, and I got that about halfway really through. So what did you get it on, PS3? Yeah, well, I don't have a PS4, so that was my only choice. Oh, yeah, you don't. That's um, one of those games that makes me want to get one of those consoles. I've been meaning to play that for pretty much since it came out. Well, Richie, it is one of the games available in that offer that I sent to you. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, for those who are wondering, uh, shop to £289, 500 gig PS4, <laughs> uh, two games, and three months of PS Plus subscription. Sam, Not a bad price. Sam, you keep every now and again sounding like you're actually doing an actual advert for yeah, a company. Sam, like you, you check in the post. <laughs> <laughs> like I wish the way I had a check in the post. Like your tone of voice and the way you sort of enunciate it and everything, you sound like you're advertising it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we got paid for that kind of thing. No, uh, I did approach someone. They were like, "You get a hundred views an episode. Go away." <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so, upcoming holiday releases we're excited for. What are you guys excited for? Uh, I've got like a little Christmas list that I've given to the other half. So what I've done is I've said there are about four games I'm looking forward to. Get me one of them for Christmas, and I promise I won't buy the other three in the meantime. Um. <laughs> Which is, it's a risky way of doing things, but she doesn't want me spending between now and then because we've got to save up for the kids' presents, etc. And I'm like, well, if I don't know which of the four it is, mm. then I can't buy any of the other three. Um, so I've given her Metal Gear Solid Five: Phantom Pain, uh, nice. which is 1st of September, I believe. Uh, Fallout 4, nice. Just Cause 3, which literally comes out the 1st of December. And, um, oh dear there is a fourth game and i can't remember what it is which probably means i don't want it as badly as the other three (laughs) that's rather worrying you might want to look that one up and tell joe what one that is then (laughs) i need to look at a release calendar that's what i need to do what is it what else is coming out it's not rise of the bloody tomb raider because xbox one exclusive (laughs) that would have been a nice segue um yeah yeah We'll come back to you then uh, yeah, while you're trying to think. <laughs> okay, um, I'm looking forward to Super Mario Maker, and I'm also looking forward to Star Fox Zero. But I'm not 100 sure if that's even coming out this year or next year. I think it might be next year. I think that's 2016, mate. 
Uh, damn it. I'm really looking forward to that. I mean, on top of the fact that Star Fox is being developed by Platinum Games. Those guys do amazing action games. They oh, did... they really do. Oh, it's so good. They they did Vanquish. They did Bayonetta. They did Metal Gear Rising. They are just brilliant. They can do no wrong. Yeah. And another one that I'm kind of looking forward to, but at the same time, sort of a bit wary of, Rodea the Sky Soldier. Now, this game, it's actually being developed uh, by a team that's headed by Yuji Naka, who originally headed the good Yuji. Sonic game. Yuji. Yuji. Yeah, that's what I said. Yuji. No, you said Yuji. It sounded like you were saying Eugene. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But yeah, it's being headed up by that guy. And um, <laughs> he, um, he was behind the good Sonic games, Nights into Dreams. I think he was behind Rystar as well, but I'm not sure. And no. from the game... Ah, oh, he's not. Okay, fair enough. And from the gameplay footage I've seen of this so far, it just kind of looks like a good spiritual successor to Nights into Dreams, but like with a different sort of perspective and spin on it. So... I, I don't think Rysar might know. have been nailed to Oshima, but I'll double check. All right. It's, it's going to bug me now. Yeah, but yeah, so pretty much it's all Nintendo games, it seems, at the moment. I mean, Just Cause 3 is another one, but you've already mentioned that one. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> um, I can't really think of anything else this year, so I guess Wait, there's not really much else. you don't want Metal Gear Solid 5? Uh, well, I'm kind of a bit meh about it. Uh, Ground Zeroes didn't really impress me. Like, I think it's just because Four just kind of put, was on such a plateau of fan service and just like, oh my god, this little reference that, that you need to play this thing for, and all these little Easter eggs here and there. It's just like I can't see Five top in Four to be honest in that regard. Okay, fair enough. Richardo. Uh, well, this question's a little bit hard. I know I wrote this question stupidly. <laughs> this question is a little bit harder for me than it is probably for you guys, because I'd obviously, well, maybe not Terry as such, but I don't have any next-gen consoles, so most of the sort of the console games that are coming out for holiday season aren't relevant to me. But, I mean, the games I'm obviously looking forward to is obviously Fallout 4, no question about that. Mm. But, and obviously the big one for me that I've talked about several times in the past would be Rock Band 4. <laughs> At some point, I'm going to have to get something to play Rock Band 4. Maybe it might not be initially, because I mean, it's not quite holiday. It's coming out in October, but I suppose that is still technically a holiday game. Anything that's uh, coming out between now and Christmas. I mean, Metal, yeah, Gear, Solid 4, yeah. Metal Gear Solid 5 sorry, is um, September, so if I can include that, then you can definitely include. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so... Rock Band 4 is the big one for me, so well, maybe I'll end up getting a console for that. Hopefully I'll end up getting a console for that. Which console? We will see. PlayStation 4. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think the other one for me is the new Tom Clancy game. Rainbow Six Siege. Thank That's you. Yeah, that thank was you. the other one. That was number four. Oh, yeah. I mean, that look game really just good. Bad ass. That's out it end really of does. August, I believe. I mean, that's not to the point where I'm going to cry over watching the trailer, but it still looks amazing. Oh, there were five. Um, Rainbow Six Siege. Um, and then this month, Disney Infinity 3.0. Uh, oh, is that the August other one? 28th. I nearly said that to you, but I, I was like, I know he likes those games, but I'm sure it can't be that one on his list. Yeah, I nearly Disney, said that. There, there were five games, now I think about it. So Rainbow Six Siege was on there, and Disney Infinity 3.0 was on there. Hmm. There we go. I've just, I'm now reading through the list of games on Wikipedia that are sort of the big games that are coming out this year. And I didn't realise there's a Peanuts movie game coming out. That's quite exciting. I didn't know there was a Peanuts movie. Oh, yeah. Wow. Peanuts movie coming out. I think it's probably later this year. It looks like <laughs> oh, it's damn. not going to be brilliant, but I'll go see it. One, anyway, that me... One that I will be buying as soon as it comes out, simply because me and the other half will play through it um, multiple times over. Sword Art Online RE Hollow Fragment. We passed on the Vita version because she didn't want to crane her neck watching me play and vice versa. Mm -hmm. But we will get the PS4 version. Oh, that reminds me. Attack on Titan uh, 3DS game. I'm keeping an eye on that as well when it comes out over here. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think it's called Humanity in Chains. I'm not sure if they've actually released it here yet or not. I know it's in Japan. Yeah, it looks pretty. Yeah, it looks pretty neat. It, and the Isn't combat... it coming out with a different name here? Yeah, I think it's Humanity and Chains over here, but I'm not sure. Oh, so it's losing the Attack on Titan part. Oh no, no, I think it's. Wait, uh... <laughs> <laughs> wait, I think we've got our wires crossed here. <laughs> as far as I know, it's just a hum Attack on Titan, Humanity and Chains, because I think they're advertising pre-orders already on the eShop on uh, Nintendo's eShop. Oh wow! Okay. 
Yeah, you get like a free theme if you order it on there, but I'm just like, eh, I want a physical copy. Yeah, I can't blame you for that. That's... Shall we move on to fan questions? Yes, have you loaded them? I have, yes. I did actually comment on they are, I mean, as usual, uh, our only fan questions are from Kishoro Guy. <laughs> that's a big fine. shout out because no, no, I'm not saying like that's a bad yeah. thing, but I mean, thank you very much. I for can, I, can, I just, can I just point out one thing? Right before you said fan questions, I turned on my actual fan, so I just kind of enjoyed that little moment just then. Lovely, Terry. <laughs> good, good, good segue. Good segue. We had another question, not from Kishoro guy, from someone else as well. I could have sworn there were there were more. Uh. I'm having a read through. I can't see anymore. No? Are you <laughs> sure? Are you looking hard enough? Oh, <laughs> sorry, I just not. booted up the podcast just to see. And I just got this sudden bit of... <laughs> yeah. That's what I keep getting every time I click on the page. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, while you're having a look, Shark, uh, do you want to read out the first fan question? Yeah, so, I mean, a lot of these questions aren't very video game heavy this week, which is fine. But it means I will struggle to answer them because I don't tend to know a lot of the answers to these. So, okay. question one. What are some really good books or authors you would recommend for anyone who has wanted to get into reading? I've always... Oh, sorry. No, try again. I've been wanting to get into reading more books, mainly books from Terry Pratchett, Stephen King, Tolkien, and R Roald Dahl, I want to say. I've oh, not Roald read Dahl. some of his... I don't think it's that Roald Dahl. It can't be. Oh, it must no, be. Not Roald Dahl. Ro Roald Dahl. Roald Dahl. They're two separate Dahl. people. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> uh, Agatha, Agatha Christie, Colin Dexter and there was one more author but I forget his name and the books he did I think they were like Harry Potter but you could be a lot more imaginative with your spells I think that's the end of the somehow part of the end of the question basically okay. can anyone recommend any authors um, yes but not ones that I have read personally my other half is big time into her books she usually gets a book uh, you know Christmas birthday etc um she's been reading the land of painted caves by uh i think it's jean m well it's it's really weirdly spelled the surname it's a -U -E -L. that's not how they say it <laughs> a-u-e-l a-u-e-l however you want to pronounce that um seriously i have no idea how you would pronounce that <laughs> um but yeah, she's got uh, Land of Painted Caves and a few other books, all in the same series. Apparently one of the books took 11 years to write, and I thought I took long enough to put a comic out. I mean, goddamn. <laughs> um, the, the other thing she reads a lot, she's been going through all of her Garth Nix books recently because she got, um, for Christmas, I think it was called... Uh, Gabrielle, Gabrielle, something like that. It's part of a series called Old Kingdom. Um, so there's a book called Abhorson, a book called Sabriel, and a book called Lyreal. Um, he's got a few other titles out, um, things like Across the Wall, uh, etc. But yeah, both of those she seems really, really into. So those mm. two. Fantastic. Yeah, on top of that, um, I mean, Douglas Adams, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, always a classic. Um, Dan Brown, who's famous for the Da Vinci Code. I mean, his other books are pretty good. I've read The Lost Symbol. That's all about the Freemasons. That's a pretty good mm. read. Apart from that, I've not really got much else to add. Oh, there's one more. It's, it's in my head, and I'm trying to think who the author is. Uh, the book is called Keeping It Real, and just it's literally downstairs on the bookshelf in our um, in our bedroom because that's where she keeps all her books. There's a book called Keeping It Real and another book called Selling Out, and they are by Justina Robson. Justina Robson, yes. How the hell did you know that? I'm on Amazon Books right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay. You you basically searched it, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Justina Robson. Uh, she's enjoying those, so. Give those three authors a shot. See what. Yeah, I mean, I don't really have anything to add on what you guys have already said. The only thing is, I recently, in the last sort of six months or so, the kind of books I've really been reading. I don't have a specific author as such, mm. but I've been reading a lot of books about sort of real life stories and recollections and tales from North Korea. Mm. Oh, okay. And actually, they make some surprising reads. Obviously, don't read them unless you have a strong will, because some of the stuff in it is pretty harrowing and pretty depressing to read but if you're if you're sort of if you don't mind that sort of stuff it's very interesting to start, kind of get an inside perspective into sort of that particular type of country like the whole dictatorship and 
Very, very I, interesting. But... Uh, I'm very wary because the last time you said to me, it's a bit grim, but I think you'll be all right with it, was irreversible. <laughs> yeah, that was that was an extreme example. <laughs> yeah, but you just saying, oh, it's a bit grim. <laughs> it's very in your face. Yeah, you're right. It, it was Ooh. more than a bit, all right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, two more authors I recommend. E.M. Forster and George Orwell. George Orwell did 1984. I'm, I'm pretty sure there is nobody left on the internet who doesn't know that. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I mean, like, we've been listening enough uh, so far. I figured, here, I'll add a couple more. Okay, fine. What's the next one, Richie? Next question is, what are some comic book recommendations I should get that aren't based around superheroes? Um, well... I'll do I, this I, for you, Sam. Arcadia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's my book, Arcadia, available on Comixology right now at the following URL. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, mine would mostly be manga because of the amount of superhero books there are. However, um, I will give a shout out to some fellow indie creators who have some non superhero books. Um, so, first of all, uh, Nanny Beam. Nanny Beam. Nanny. I know her real name now, so I keep forgetting how to pronounce her, you know, pseudonym name <laughs> thing. Um, but she's got a series um, which I, I buy a new volume of it every time I see her at a convention. Um, it, it's, it's basically like a demon moves in next door to this girl's flat. Um, it's, you know. If you want to look at her site, it's uh, Hibby Demons, so if you Google that, you'll find it. Um, it's it's kind of fun and quirky and, and awesome. Uh, there's John Locke does a series called Afterlife Inc., which is a con man who dies, goes to the afterlife, and uh, makes a, sort of a business out of it. Um, sort of starts running the afterlife like it's a corporation. Kind of Kind of quirky. Um, there's, in the second volume, a storyline about the uh, US military trying to invade the afterlife, which feels a lot like South Park's Imagination Land. Um, equally, his partner in crime, Nick Angel, has a series called Seven String. That's an awesome indie comic series. Uh, musical instruments. Uh, so when you're fighting, things like changing tempo and things like that affect your fight. Um, so we got we got Hibby Demons, we've got um, Seven oh. String, Afterlife Inc. Uh, what's that for? Also, John Locke and Nick Angel do a collaborative book called, uh, well, it's a magazine called Big Punch Magazine, quarterly magazine, four short stories, uh, into it's sort of all carrying on each week, and that's got uh, let's see, Cuckoos, Ninety Nine Swords, a couple of other bits and pieces in there. Uh, we then have... Oh, God, it was on the tip of my tongue a freaking moment ago, and now it's completely gone. Uh, it's because I'm on the spot, and I'm trying to think of everybody at the same time, and I can't. The Moon. Um, so The Moon is a comic about uh, basically a government agent who has a moon for a head. Um, it's quite funny. Loose Cannon, which, yes, reads as Loose Cannon. That's sort of a sci-fi adventure -y kind of thing. Um, just so many indie artists I know. Sean Doby, Descending Outlands, uh, issue two of that is coming out at Melksham Comic Con at the end of August. Uh, very, 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 very good book. We've got so many bloody things here. Sarah Grayley, Our Super Awesome Adventure, which is a publication of her webcomic. It's like four panel strips, um, and it's like her and her boyfriend and just the stupid random stuff they get up to, which is just great to open up and read um let's move away from the indie comics let's move into the manga -y stuff well a manga indie comic mega tokyo um so that's you know grab some volumes of that it's also online for free you can read it there uh comic party which is about a guy trying to sell indie comics um which is a lot of fun bakuman which is a manga oh hell songs. yes Yes. <laughs> I've seen the anime adaptation, so that's enough for me to vouch for that. That's good. Two friends, one of whom looks a hell of a lot like Richie. Um, <laughs> he really does, I'm sorry, Richie. Um, trying to break into the manga industry and making their own series and books, that's great. 
Full Metal Alchemist, the greatest manga ever written. Um, Death Note, obviously. Negama, uh, ten-year-old mage, gets sent to a boarding school in Japan, which is all girls, and hijinks ensue. Uh, lots of wizard battles and magic spells. Love Hina by the same author, Ken Akamatsu. That's a harem manga, but it's it's such a lovely love story. I have to read that at least once a year. Chobits um, is good for a chuckle. Oh, so good for a chuckle, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that was a lot of... Bo- I'm going to stop myself, because otherwise I'm going to keep going for another half an hour. If you yep. want, Kishoro Guy, I will send you a list. And I'm going to add Ghost World as well. Yeah. Yes, absolutely, add Ghost World. What about Tank Girl? We could po- probably put Tank Girl on that list. Oh, Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Like the whole oh. six-volume series of Scott Pilgrim. Um, that can go on there. So can Seconds, which is Brian Lee O'Malley's newer book. He'll send you a list, guy. <laughs> Mouse. Make sure you read Mouse. M-A-U-S. It's, um, it's, it's basically World War II with mice. It's, uh... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, and anything you can find by Disconnected Press, they do political satire. Zombie Space Pigs 1, 2, and 3 are brilliant. Um, one, well, two, I, think three. I think I've got 1 and 2. I think that's yeah. answered that question nicely. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have a field day with the next question as well, Sam. Uh oh. Unless Terry wants to add anything to that previous question before I move on. No, let's get to the next one. I think we covered that one pretty well. (laughs) Question three. What are some of your favourite mangas, and I'm sorry if I say this next word wrong, or Gekigas? Gekigas. Gekigas. What's a Gekiga? A serious manga. Oh. Yeah. Serious manga? Yeah, so things that have a darker tone, uh, usually a fair bit grittier. Um, Yeah. Like if oh. they did a if they did a manga adaption of Psycho Pass, then that would probably be a Gekiga. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, so, you could maybe swing Death Note as one, but you'd be kind of pushing your luck. What about Ghost in the Shell? Yeah, I guess. Like the the manga version of Akira, certainly. You know. Yeah. Um, although, like darker than that, even. So yeah. <laughs> so like Gantz. Like, if you took, like, the gory, bloody, child-rapey bits of Elf and Lead and had a manga that was just that and none of the light-hearted stuff. Eesh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, God. And that's I don't read enough. many of them, I've got to admit. I prefer my light-hearted stuff. I really do. I um... Yeah, you're a shonen guy, aren't you? <laughs> Here's the thing. I... With my media, this applies to games, movies, television, etc. Like, the dark shit I used to be able to get into and really enjoy. Since I've had kids, I have been ruined for dark stuff. Is it, because, is it because you're kind of limited in terms of how much you can watch it because of the, you know, the kids watching it and stuff? Or is it no. more that you just don't want to? My worldview has changed. Oh. Like, you see them start as these innocent, pure, lovely, blank slates, and you see all that's good with humanity encompassed in their little faces. And then you look at a slash film, and you're like, yeah, no. <laughs> like, The Human Centipede. After you've had kids, you can't watch The Human Centipede ever again. Dude, I've not had kids, and I don't want to watch that thing. Not again, <laughs> I, did, I did watch it. It was not okay. something if, to be watched. There you go, Gekigas. If The Human yeah. Centipede was a manga. Yeah, and on that note, don't watch a Serbian film. Ugh. Yeah, I think I mentioned most of my favourite manga, though. This is a problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like the previous... Uh, Full Metal Alchemist will always be at number one. Yeah. Negamer is right up there. Love Hina's right up there. Dragon Ball. I'm sorry, it is. It's in there. Uh, yeah. Bakuman. E- e- Bakuman is, like, fighting... Full Metal Alchemist for first, but Full Metal Alchemist takes it, I yeah. think. Uh, you mentioned Dragon Ball. I just want to mention a uh, little fan fiction uh, Dragon Ball manga that I've been reading. Like The art, the artwork on it, I'm really quite impressed with. They managed to capture Toriyama's style pretty well. And Multiverse? It's quite... Yep, you got it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it really impressed me. Like The ideas they had and the things they could do in the universe. And silly little moments like... Uh... Of spoiler alert for the next few seconds super saiyan 3 vegeto versus super saiyan 3 broly and their power equals the mass of the moon 
<laughs> what I quite liked was the idea of the Namekian that's every Namekian ever fused together. Like, they just... Because they're like, well, if Piccolo can be three people, where does the limit cap out? You know, just keep doing it. You get oh, one God. ultimate Namekian. <laughs> Amazing. God. I wonder how, I wonder how it compare how he compares to, like... I don't know, the other characters, like the strongest Saiyans and stuff. I mean, he must be able to own everyone, surely. Yeah, he's pretty badass. You know, I mean, when cool. you think about it, Piccolo managed to go from, like, second form Freezer with Nail uh, sort of power level to fuse him with Kami, who had a power level of, like, 200, so, and yeah. going, like, oh, past Super Saiyan. It's just like, so oh. who you fuse with doesn't really make a difference. One really lovely, light-hearted comedy manga that I've been absolutely adoring. I've only got three volumes of it so far, but the next time I'm in London, I'll be raiding Forbidden Planet on their Free for Two deal that they seemingly always got. Plug. On. Yeah, or Bristol. I might pop into Bristol. Bristol's not far from here. Checks um, in the post. And raid their Free for Two. Nisekoi. I think I've pronounced that correctly, but Nisekoi is lovely. I absolutely adore Nisekoi so far. Huh. Yeah. It's, it's, it's great. The missus is reading the novelizations of Sword Art Online, and uh, we've looked at the manga, but she's like, I've watched the anime, I've read the novelization, I don't really want to then look at the manga as well. Um, Wolf's Rain, I got that, I it, didn't know there was a manga of Wolf's Rain until it came around to Christmas, and I picked it up alongside the Sword Art Online novelizations for the other half. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, Wolf's Rain got a manga, it's two volumes long. It's, um... And that's severely overlooked, I think. It's, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry I can't give you more dark stuff, Kishara guy, but I, I just don't... Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, a very well-known manga. It's like one of the few that I've actually bothered to read is the Pokemon manga. And so I quite, I really like the fact that it's completely different to the... I know, we're not talking about dark ones anymore. I'm just talking about manga in general. Which I, I really Pokemon like the... manga? Because there are like five... Uh, the original Pokemon Adventure, whatever one it is, where the main character is called Red and uh, he starts off with a polywag and stuff. Oh yeah, Pokemon Adventures is still going. Its volume numbers are in like the 40s or something stupid now. Yeah. They, did, they even started going back and doing things like Fire Red and Leaf Green. Um, where like they bring the characters back and do, you know, the extra Sevi Islands and all the rest of it. Oh, but yeah, no, yeah, I really enjoyed uh, sort of seeing how it differs to the series, and it is so different. I mean, mm. for one, the the gym leaders are a lot more kind of intimidating and formidable. Uh, and well, some of them are Team so Rocket members. Exactly, and Team Rocket as well. You know, they're not a joke. They're actually a serious threat as well. And yeah, yeah, I, yeah. It's just and the fact that he actually lets his Pokemon fucking evolve. <laughs> that too. And and then when they reach their final evolve forms, he keeps them around for a while rather than saying "fuck off, Pidgeot, go to a concentration camp, Charizard, and go breed and die, Butterfree." Lovely. Yeah. But what's nice about the Pokemon Adventures manga as well is that it regularly changes protagonist. Um, so they actually bring someone in called Yellow. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, then it switches to Gold and Silver, and again new cast. Then it switches to Ruby Sapphire, new cast. And just keeps doing it, um, which so that's pretty good. Mm. It sounds like if I was going to read manga, then Pokemon is probably the kind of one I would go for because I can already relate to it. I already know Pokemon. Yeah, no, I, I it's would very seriously it. recommend Bakuman. There's a lot of Japanese culture bits in Bakuman, but I still really, really like. If anyone ever said to me, I don't like superheroes and all the rest of it. I want to read something comic-y. I don't mind if it's manga. I'd just be like. Bakuman, Volume 1, here you go. Like, you'll yeah. thank me later. Yeah, no, I agree on that. Yeah. But then I've only seen the anime adaptation, so that's what I'm basing my view on. Yeah, or Full Metal. Uh, either or, but yeah, I, I just like the light-hearted stuff. And I think, like, drama and serious and gore and blood is very easy to do. Yeah. Comedy is fucking difficult. Now, I think it takes a lot more skill to pull off comedy, especially in comic form where you've not got the control over the timings and you can't control the tone of voice that it's read in. Because yeah. you look at, you know, an email, three different people walk away with three different interpretations of that email. When something's written down, it's so much harder to convey and you have to rely on the art to get mm. the right tone of voice for the speech across. 
which is a yeah. lot of trust in your artist, and it's it's just a, a fantastic effort. So uh, that's why probably I prefer comedies. I, I always leave them feeling really happy and uplifted, and they just take so much more work and time and effort than the serious stuff. Yeah, the thing with serious stuff is, I mean, they need to have some fun with serious stuff every now and again. Otherwise, you just really don't give a shit about the characters. I you mean, just get bogged down as well. Like, I know, you don't want to keep reading. I mean, I give more of a shit about Zidane from Final Fantasy IX than I do about Cloud. You know, Cloud. Oh goes... God, yeah. Zidane had a personality. Exactly. Zidane could crack a goddamn joke every now and then. You know. Yeah, like, Cloud and Squall is... can just go fuck off and just go cry in a corner. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. In serious stuff, they do need to have a bit of lightheartedness to it so that you actually get attached. It's like, I mean, I enjoyed Ghost in the Shell, but most of it, most of the time, I was just like, I don't give a shit about any of these people. I mean, the world and what's happening around it and the cultural context is interesting, but the people are just so one dimensional. True. We should probably move on to the next question. Though. Yeah. <laughs> question four. Bringing it back now to our overall gaming theme after that little segue. What are some of your favourite PSP titles? Now, I can't weigh in on this because I've never owned a PSP, so hopefully you two will be able to fill this one. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> Christ, uh, Crisis Core Final Fantasy Seven, Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, Burnout Legends, Daxter. Uh, they're the first four that came to my head. I've kind of got myself stuck now. Do you want to take over, Sam? Yeah, you mentioned most of mine already, though. Uh, Metal Gear Solid, Peace Walker, Ratchet and Clank, Size Matters. Um, like you said, Kingdom Hearts, you've already taken. Crisis Core, you've already taken. Dissidia, the second one. Oh, um, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Guitar Man Lives. I know it's a port, but still. Oh, god, yeah, Guitar Man Lives. Guitar Man on the go, in general, you know. Amazing <laughs> concept. There's yeah. a Parappa the Rapper on PSP, too. Oh, yeah, that's right. Thanks for reminding yeah. me. That's on my list. <laughs> More Riven Games. Um, Burnout Dominator, to a lesser extent. It's not as good as Legends, but it's still more Burnout on the go, so I'll take it, you know? Yeah. Gran Turismo uh, on PSP is okay. I mean, it's not something I'll pay through the nose for, but it's a good little driving game for out and about. There's a PSP Gran Turismo? <laughs> yeah. The only thing is, like, you don't have cup tournaments, it's just single races, but I think that's built on the whole idea of, well, you're playing it on the go, so you're just having the quick goes every now and again. Oh, also, um, the PSP ports of uh, a whole ton of RPGs, actually. Like, Final Fantasy 1 and 2, obviously, but there were, um... Which of the Tales games is it that's ported to PSP? Eternia. Thank you. I was about to, like, roll back across my room to have a look at my PSP shelf and see. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and while I remember, the Wipeout games on PSP, which are Wipeout Pure and Wipeout Pulse, those are so good. Yeah, no, the PSP was pretty decent machine really yeah and when you think about the library it had at its core and the fact that you can play ps1 games on it as well you know it's a pretty decent little thing to have yeah that's true that's true um right okay i think that then brings us on to the last item for today uh which would be my question of the week Okay. You need a little fan. You need a little fanfare button for that, don't you? Really? <laughs> like radio. Lip, 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 lips. One oh six. Yeah, you need. Yeah, you need like some sound clips, don't you? You need to have them on standby. <laughs> so anyone who knows where that last sound clip was from, thanks for paying attention. <laughs> okay, so if you could have any one piece of gaming memorabilia, what would it be? Memorabilia. Yes. Um, so, so something that's already been made that's like a collector's item or something that yeah, you think it has of? to exist yes. oh, oh god alright oh, do you want me to go first to set an example then? Yeah, yeah go for it Yeah. Um, you know the Sonic Spinball roller coaster ride at Alton Towers <laughs> you want a whole roller coaster no I don't want the whole yeah, roller coaster in my living room <laughs> <laughs> Outside of that roller coaster is a life size Sonic the Hedgehog statue. Oh, I want God. that. <laughs> no, you don't. Joe would kill you for putting that in the house. <laughs> or maybe I'd kill her before I got it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that, that's my one. Um, oh, you've really stumped me with this one. I mean, you stumped me every week with this, but this week you've really stumped me. 
Yeah. Is there any limited oh, edition I'm... rock band guitars or anything you particularly want? I don't think there is. The only I mean, the only one I would have said would have been the Beatles guitars, but I had those. I bought one of the Beatles guitars. Oh, okay, you got that. <laughs> um, I know what I'd like. An F-Zero AX arcade machine. It's not really memorabilia. <laughs> oh, damn it. All right, let me carry on thinking for a moment. But you could have like one of those neon Sega bar signs, for example. I know you kept looking at them on eBay when you were like, damn them being $300. Yeah. Does a pinball machine count? Having a video I'm, game I'm going to allow it machine. simply because otherwise we'll be here all night. <laughs> yeah, a video game themed pinball machine works for me. Yeah, okay. Sega bar Which sign any... works for or, me. Or actually, no, 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 no. I'll take it back. It's not, it's kind of memorabilia and it's kind of not. One of those Pokemon Snap stands that you always see in on pictures from like restaurants in America where they had them in like McDonald's and stuff like that where you could print <laughs> the pictures you took. Oh, yes, that's practical too. I like it. See? Ooh. Got there in the end. Uh, Terry, are you sticking with your bar sign? Yep, thank you for that idea. That would be a good one to have. <laughs> <laughs> You're not exactly reaching for the stars there, are you? <laughs> no. Easily pleased. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'll probably think of a better one for next time, right at the start. I'll just, like, yelp it right out before you, like, introduce it. No, I won't do that, <laughs> but... <laughs> Leave a comment. <laughs> well, uh, that wraps us for this week. I think we overshot by, like, <laughs> double the usual length. Thrustmaster. <laughs> yeah, great. Do you want me to start listing PlayStation 1 exclusives, Terry? Mine, I can mine's do on it. order. My Thrustmaster's on order. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think we've taken that joke to its limits. Thanks for listening, everybody. Good night.